So first I started off with a 3D scan of my hat and I just used the point cloud for this and just tracing around all the edges basically uh, using it as reference to keep it as realistic as possible just making vertices and connecting them later on you could see this as kind of like a retopology for a 3d scan to be honest i think it would have worked better if i just used the mesh itself but i wanted to try this out since i thought maybe if they snap to the vertices itself it would be uh, quicker i don't think that's the case really but uh, it was so fun to uh, to try and it uh, came out pretty great so i'm just doing that here and and I'm going to skip ahead because it's mostly just the same thing. Just have snapping enabled to the vertices, as you can see at the top with the magnet and then just extruding and making faces. I did try to um, get the edge flow to follow the seams, the hat itself, so that I could cover it up later. So I don't have to worry about the UV map. In some part that, that worked, in some other parts it didn't really work at all. So I had to do that uh, in a different way. It would have been best if I did it uh, everywhere but that wasn't the case so i'll keep that in mind for the next time i do something like this uh keeping the seams in a place where the seams would be is the best way to uh model clothing or accessories in this case i'm just going to skip ahead because um this is just pretty boring to only look at uh when i was done i used a sculpting brush to kind of smooth everything out and kind of uh yeah make it look a little bit better instead of the uh, randomness that was the 3d scan then i started to add in the uh, band at the back of the hat if that's what it's called uh, I, I basically for the model i spent the most amount of time on this because it had to look good i wanted to be as realistic as i could possibly get it so yeah modeling this by hand was uh took a little bit longer than the hat itself because that was already scanned and this one wasn't really that detailed i modeled a clip and just really simple just a plane with the solidify and subdivision and that was basically it i used a property to color these black and white so the metal part would be uh, white i believe and then the head would be black so when in substance painter i could bake that to a map and use it as a mask you can find a really great video about this on blend shapes channel which i will have linked below once i saw that video i started using it it's a really great method to it's really a great way to only have one material but different colors on objects and for my use case i just use it in substance painter so i don't have to have different materials i can just have one material uh, with those properties uh, on there so i can use that as masks so when i export in substance painter uh, it's not multiple different textures that I have to put back together again it's just one texture if you want a video about how to do that in substance painter you can leave a comment and i'll make that for you it's pretty simple, but it's also really something I couldn't find really easily. So yeah, I, I would be happy to make a tutorial about that in Substance Painter. Uh, and when I was done with the model, I just added in some seams and started UV unwrapping it. It wasn't like uh, perfect. As I said, everywhere where the seams were, I just added a seam as well, uh, just so the texture would be as flat as possible, uh, but we wouldn't see the seams as well. Once that was done, I just brought it into Substance Painter and use the properties as a mask in Substance Painter, like I said before. And then just uh, playing with the default materials and also some from uh, Ambient CG. Uh, I don't think I used one of my own materials here because I don't have fabric ones yet because they're so easy to make, so I just didn't bother. But yeah, uh, for the textures, I always like to get like a base texture. So for this one, it was denim, I think. Just recolor it and then I wanted to add in some some kind of scratches to it so I added in another fabric material make that white and with a smart mask I could then just uh, add in some weathering and then I also like to add in some dirt as well then for the most time intensive part was adding in the seams I did this with curves in substance painter which I have used before but not really to this extent I used a lot of curves in, in this one i think about uh 50 or 60 curves total uh for this one uh, just the stitches on the cap and i had my uh my hat next to me as well so i could look at it look at where all these stitches were and let me tell you there are a lot of stitches on uh <laughs> on a hat i didn't know there were that many but yeah you learn something new every day uh so yeah this was pretty boring it was also pretty time and intensive but at the end came out pretty great i also need to find a way to kind of duplicate these curves to uh and move them to the bottom for example because now i had to do it manually uh, but it would just be quicker if you could 
duplicate the curves and move them to and move them to a different face so if someone has a method for that please let me know in the comments uh, i couldn't find it anywhere so i just did it manually so just adding a lot of stitches and later i also added in some seams uh just in the parts where there were actual seams and the stitches were i think what really brought this together in the end was the stitches and seam combination on like the main part of the hat since those were pretty recognizable i also tried to add in those breathing holes that you see on hats uh i don't know if that's a clear explanation but yeah you have those breathing holes um but i couldn't really find a way to make those i think i had to put that into the mesh uh like as geometry so yeah that's not in here but i don't think that is a problem because i also don't think every hat has that so not a problem then i added in my logo with a different material and just stamped it on there by the way if you guys need alpha textures you can find them on my website there are about 100 free alpha textures you can download and use for a pretty much anything you want it's uh, completely free to use and i will be adding to that uh, when I get more alpha textures. You can see I tried to add in those rings but it didn't really work. And for the final part I added in some creases because I noticed I was missing those and then just deleted them on the front part um, like the brim of the hat uh, because there were no wrinkles there. And then like I said I had to duplicate the curves manually um, and it took a pretty long time but it worked out in the end. And that's basically it. Some final touches and then i brought it into blender and made uh, this render with it for the render in blender i just imported my model uh, with 8k textures to get the most amount of detail and then just place it in a scene with a really high detail also 8k texture of some wood and just place it on top of there with displacement and all that and then in the background i just scattered some assets and that's pretty much how I made the scene. It's not really anything complicated. Uh, just a lot of depth of field on the camera focused on the hat model. Oh, I also added in some leaves, some uh, one tree model in front of the light just to get that nice leaf texture in the lighting. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Um, this model is available on my Gumroad, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.